So it has been a hard year. The pandemic is taking its toll day after day after day and month after month after month into the second year now. For some of us, it has been numbing. Another day within the same four walls, another, another day without a hug. You wake up, do your routine, check the COVID statistics maybe, keep doing your routine, go to bed. Month after month. So I wonder if that rings true for, for you. For some of us, it's the opposite problem. Every day is uncertain. Wake up not knowing where the next paycheck is coming from. Wake up not knowing what to do with the kids. Wake up not knowing if your coping mechanism will be deemed non-essential this week. Wake up and your dog won't give you a moment's reprieve and the kids are bouncing off the walls and there's a shortage of who knows what. And then George Floyd happens and then January 6th happens. The comedian Julie Nolke put out a short video last spring called Explaining the Pandemic to My, to my Past Self. I wonder if you've seen it. So in the comedy sketch, Julie Nol Nolke goes back in time. She goes back in time to warn her past self about the pandemic. And they sit together in her kitchen. Julie from the future does not provide details about what will happen because she doesn't want to mess with the space-time continuum. It's good for her, very responsible. She merely gives mysterious advice. So she says to her past self, go on a Costco run, stock up. Can't tell you why. She suggests getting a dog. She says, get out of the stock market, but maybe invest in Zoom. Can't tell you why. Don't be attached to your travel plans. And then she asks, do you have any hobbies? You better get some hobbies. She asks, would you rather be in a crowded shopping mall or at home on the couch watching Netflix? On the couch watching Netflix. Okay, great. You're going to be just fine. So how naive and optimistic was that? When Julie Nolke made that video in April 2020, little did she... So picture the next video in which, in which herself from June goes back to talk with her April self, again sitting in her kitchen. Her April self is feeling good about having just helped her January self. She's feeling good about her new hobby of baking bread. Remember those innocent times baking bread last spring. She needs a moment to take in that her June self looks a little worse for wear. Is the pandemic still on, she asks, and her June self says, pandemic? Oh yeah, um, the George Floyd protests have made her totally forget about the pandemic. Her April self is very scared to not know what is coming. So April, Julie is disturbed. She asks, is there any good news? And June, Julie just shakes her head and laughs and laughs and laughs. In the face of it all, all she can do is laugh. And when Julie make, made that second video in June, little did she know that she would be making another video in October and another in December. Julie Nolke can find humor in suffering and the pandemic is the gift that keeps on giving. I don't recall her October self having any substantive advice for her June self, just resignation. Her December self just felt stuck and overwhelmed. And now, several months after that, here we are in April, 2021, another wave, another lockdown. Maybe you're feeling both stuck and overwhelmed. The last year has been an intense example of what can happen when the rhythms of our lives are disturbed. This week, I've been looking at this predicament we're in through the lens of the living tradition. And maybe you know, if you haven't seen our hymnals for a while, oh, can you see? It's too glary. Our hymnal is called Singing the Living Tradition. We are a living tradition and we sing about it. Um, 
we call ourselves a living tradition to remind ourselves how intentional we have to be in adapting to a new context. Now, the pandemic didn't give us a choice about changing. We had to change when the pandemic hit. Without the pandemic, we never could have pivoted online so quickly. But I think our self-identity helps as well. We identify as a living tradition, and that gives us the best shot at changing when time comes. It is still hard, though, to reshape ourselves. It takes ongoing intention. We need to sing about it. So 200 years ago, the Unitarian poet James Russell Lowell wrote song lyrics. New occasions teach new duties. Time makes ancient good uncouth. It's old fashioned language, so I'll say it again. New occasions teach new duties. Time makes ancient good uncouth. Wonder, yeah, yeah. I wonder if anyone knows those lyrics. Unitarians sung those lyrics for generations. But eventually, even those lyrics about needing to change, those lyrics became stale and needed to be refreshed. So we update our songs as tastes change. We update our rituals to keep them fresh. We update our beliefs as we get new information. We're a living tradition. But that is only half of what it means to be a living tradition. The first half of being a living tradition is bringing the past into the present in a way that is fresh. The second half of being a living tradition is bringing the future into the present in a way that is manageable out of the infinite possible futures in front of us, out of the infinite possible paths we make our way forward. In a pandemic, we pivot to Zoom. We try a new hobby of baking bread. We make little crafts and send them to our friends in the mail. I don't know if you did that. It's fun, I recommend it. We might have days or even weeks when all we can do is cuddle up in front of Netflix. But we also have that living tradition within us that calls us to create something new, to choose a fulfilling way of living that is adapted to these times. A living tradition is a form of resilience. Resilience is the capacity to bounce back, the capacity to be yourself even in tough times. And this is not merely an individualistic resilience. Yes, we can cultivate resilience in ourselves, and we also cultivate resilience in our communities. When I don't know if I can bounce back myself, the community is there for me. Somehow we bounce back together. So let's go into detail uh, now about how to cultivate this resilience in our lives within our living tradition. First of all, remember the big picture, remember the goal, remember the vision. Keep your spirit connected to the larger movement. What are we aiming for? What do we want? What do we cherish? In this video we just experienced, the singers are sisters. Uh, one of them, Leah, her name is Leah Song, spent time with the Zapatista movement in Southern Mexico. And the other, Chloe Smith, was an environmental activist before becoming a musician. They, learn, they learned from their father that music needed to be about more than just music. So here's a quote from Chloe. She says, Our father brought to our attention from day one, art for art's sake is lovely, but there is something more pressing and all-encompassing about the folks who speak to the bigger picture. Our human experience, our spiritual and social need to lean on each other, find support system, ways to rally for a higher purpose. So that is the first tip of our living tradition. Keep in mind that higher purpose. Keep in mind what it is all about. You might put photos up that remind you of what it's all about. Center yourself on the ultimate good. A second tip for cultivating a living tradition is to wiggle your roots. That's an expression from the Unitarian Kimberly Ann Tomzak Carlson. She writes, feel the gravity of the earth holding you in place. Wiggle your toes as if they were roots. Roots connect you to the earth, lending you strength. 
gently sway in the wind, turning your body like a trunk of a tree, leaning this way and that, bending as the air pushes and pulls. What surrounds you may sway you, make you bend and feel unbalanced. Wiggle your toes. Know that your roots can hold you as you grow and learn. A tree is nourished by the soil and water. You are nourished by food the earth grows and the water provides. You are cared for and loved by many people. So breathe, breathe deeply. Still yourself. Know that your roots are strong and wiggle your roots. Wiggling your roots might mean playing with the lyrics of an old song. You know, we're staying rooted to them, but we're going to wiggle those roots. One of our favorite songs, Blue Boat Home, is not an original tune. Peter Mayer used an older tune whose words he no longer believed. So he wiggled his religious roots and found a way to keep the music alive. So I ask, what are the patterns you find yourself in and how might you wiggle your roots to stay rooted but freshen up those patterns? A third way to cultivate the living tradition is to do the work, is to do work at the periphery. Sometimes looking straight ahead, it feels more stuck. So you can look around. Reverend Mark Morrison Reed and religious educator Jackie James edited a collection of writings from Unitarian Universalists of Color. And the book is called Voices from the Margins. Perhaps you're familiar with it. Historians will tell you how much action there is on the edges. Ecologists will tell you how much action there is on the edges. So what are your edges? What's at the edge of your periphery? What parts of yourself deserve to be heard, tended to, and explored? A living tradition is often revitalized at the periphery. Oh, a fourth way to cultivate the living tradition is to scatter seeds. Just as this congregation was a seed planted by the First Unitarian Congregation of Toronto, we keep our tradition alive by scattering seeds, by creating new growth. Scattering seeds, seeds means giving energy to something that shares our essence, but will grow with freedom in a new context. When too many transgender people didn't feel fully included in our congregations, some organized and planted a new seed called TRUST, which stands for, and they were playful in this, it stands for Transgender Religious Professional You Use Together, TRUST. It's now a thriving community. When we have energy that needs to move, we plant new seeds. So what needs to grow in your own life? What seeds could you plant? That is four ways to tend to our living tradition. Remember the larger vision, wiggle your roots, do work at the periphery, and scatter seeds. A fifth way to tend to our living tradition and to help yourself thrive in today's world is to cultivate anti-fragility. I wonder if you've heard that term before. Nassim Talib describes anti-fragility as, as when your mistakes make you stronger. I don't know about you, but I can be afraid to make mistakes. I've learned that activities I love the most are activities where I'm not afraid to make those mistakes. So try cooking something new. Try singing at the top of your lungs and don't apologize for how it sounds. It feels so good. When your mistakes affect other people, yes, take care. Figure out how to cultivate anti-fragility together. When you're in a rut, let yourself experiment and make mistakes. When you're feeling overwhelmed, give yourself a break when you make a mistake. Cultivate anti-fragility. Live so that your mistakes make you stronger, like muscles that grow when they're worked. Liberal religion is not fixed. There's an old saying, we don't stand for something, we move. So in, your, in this 
these times, let yourself move, let the energy in you find new patterns that connect you more deeply to the ultimate goal of love, justice, relationship, and all the good things. And perhaps if Julie Nolke is onto something, perhaps your future self is already watching you discover a new life. <laughs>